For the mountains may depart, and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. We hear many descriptions of the nature of God summed up in a few words. Mercy, steadfast love, justice, truth, peace, grace, charity, love, faithfulness, righteousness, compassion. The most quoted of these qualities is mercy. Four Hebrew words are used in the Old Testament for mercy. Hesed, Rachamim, Hanan, and Hus, each with its own nuance. Our English translations use even more words to grasp this essential quality of who God is. Mercy, steadfast love, covenant love, clemency, compassion, pity, goodness, faithful love, unfailing love, kindness, loving kindness, faithfulness, loyalty, and constant love. Today, we will focus on the two most used words, hesed and rachamim. Hesed is usually translated as steadfast love and rachamim as compassion. The word hesed is used over 300 times in the Old Testament and almost always as a quality of God, not of humans. For the Israelites, God's hesed began when God chose them as a people and led them out of Egypt into the Promised Land. God's hesed, or steadfast love, characterizes the covenant which God made with the people. Echoed throughout the Old Testament is the phrase that God keeps covenant and shows hesed. In the history books, we read, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart. God's steadfast love is never ending. In our beloved Psalm 23, we sing, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. God's steadfast love is always shown in action, beginning with the exodus from Egypt. God provides for the Israelites in the wilderness, delivers them from their enemies, is forgiving and shows mercy to them when they are penitent and always has compassion on them. The second most used word in the Old Testament for mercy is rachamim. It comes from the word rechem, meaning mother's womb, and is translated tender, responsive, compassionate love. Womb love like that of a mother responding in love to a child of her womb. The New Testament also has several Greek words to express the depth of this word mercy. The one best known to us would be Elios. We use it when we pray at the beginning of Mass, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Early in the Gospels, we are reminded that mercy is a defining quality of God and that we can expect the one to be born to have this same quality. Mary sings her Magnificat while Jesus is still in her womb. God's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. Zechariah, celebrating the birth of John, proclaims, God has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered the Holy Covenant, the oath that God swore to our ancestor Abraham. Mary and Elizabeth and Zechariah share in God's mercy, in the unbroken covenant that links God's actions in the Old Testament with God's actions in the New Testament. 
Like the God of mercy in the Old Testament, Jesus lives mercy in action. He responds to cries for mercy from the two blind men, a woman with a possessed daughter, the father of a boy with epilepsy, 10 lepers, and 5,000 hungry people. Jesus tells a grateful recipient of his healing mercy, go home to your people and tell them all that the Lord in his mercy has done for you. Jesus teaches forgiveness and mercy by the prayer which he taught us. Forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. By his parables of the Good Samaritan and the Prodigal Son, and by the example he gave us on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. We end with words from the Book of Lamentations placed in a poignant chant by the Newfoundland Presentation Sister, Miriam Martin.